Hi there, it's The View from 22, and uh, this week, like all weeks, we're looking at an issue that uh, isn't getting quite enough attention. Um, my name is Igor Torini Lalik, I'm the arts editor of The Spectator, and we're joined today by Winston Marshall, formerly of Mumford & Sons. So this week we are looking at the, um, the row between David Gilmore and Roger Waters, another row between these two, um, both members of Pink Floyd, former members of Pink Floyd, and it involves Dave Gilmore's wife, who's come out, said that uh, Waters is anti-Semitic to his core, a lying, thieving, hypocritical, tax-avoiding, lip-syncing, misogynistic, sick with envy, megalomaniac. Um, what, where does this, uh, this animus come from? What's the, what's the beef between these two? Well, the story is bigger than that. So not only is it a Twitter spat, as you as you read there, that's Polly Sampson's tweet. Uh, Polly Sampson, not only a lyricist for Pink Floyd, but also wife of David Gilmore, one of the other members and still standing members of Pink Floyd. Pink Floyd actually still exists. Roger Waters left the band in 1985. Um, and in fact, uh, Pink Floyd put out a song last year with the lead singer of Ukrainian band Boombox, uh, in support of uh, Ukraine in the war. So Pink Floyd are still, uh, still there. Nick Mason, another original me- uh, member on, on drums. This spat, I think, is decades old and, and it's now somehow got to the point where Roger Waters is speaking to the UN Security Council. It's a, ho- it's a whole mess of things all happening simultaneously. For some reason, Putin or the Russian Federation have asked him to speak... Uh, on the on the war in the Ukraine, as if as if, as if this bass player is the appropriate guy to 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 broker peace, um, and uh, all the while um, there's uh, Pink Floyd are disputing uh, or trying to sell their their back catalogue, um, uh, uh, as well as the fact that Roger Waters is also just re-recording the now fifty year old Dark Side of the Moon uh, because of some deep bitterness towards the rest of the band. He seems to think that it was really him who was the genius and, uh, and uh, that the others are sort of irrelevant. So he's re-recording it and, and, and intends to put the album out uh, later this year when he's finished. So it's kind of a weird mash uh, of kind of a, a typical band dispute that's now playing out on the, on the global uh, stage. You, are you enjoying it? Is this one of the great musical feuds of all times? <laughs> uh, no, I'm not enjoying it. I'll tell you why I'm not enjoying it. Because uh, Roger Waters' words and writings are filled with anti-Western, anti-Jewish rhetoric. In his speech for the uh, at to the UN Security Council, he makes more jibes at Israel than he does proffer actual solutions for the Ukraine-Russia war. This has all come about, by the way, the reason why Putin has asked him, or the Russian Federation has asked him, is because of an interview he did with the Berliner, Berliner Zeitung um, earlier this month. Again, this interview littered with anti-Western jabs and anti-Israel jabs. He, he compares Israel again to Nazi Germany, as if what Israel are doing is any way comparable to the slaughter of six million Jews. He uh, says that he would not, boy, he would absolutely play in Russia if he could, but he would not, if there was anyone to boycott for political reasons, apparently it's America. Now, also keep in mind that he is part of BDS, uh, Boycott Divestment Sanctions, um, and so does boycott Israel. So uh, th- this would be uh, fun if it wasn't so, so laced with um, what I consider pretty hateful stuff. Well, hang on, you're, you're a big supporter of um, free speech, not getting cancelled, um, but you seem to be veering over into the side of um, cancelling him. Well, no, I wouldn't go that far. I, I, um, I do believe in free speech. I also believe in uh, uh, the right to criticise, and I also believe in the right of association. I didn't say anything about uh, uh, cancelling him. In fact, Poland have, I think, cancelled some of his shows because of uh, what... Um, 
he has said on Ukraine. In fact, it seems to me that it's Roger Waters who's cancelling Israel, um, if anyone's doing the cancelling. And I, I, I'll stand by my right to criticise him for doing that. You famously split with the band that you were a member of, Mumford & Sons. Um, what does it feel like when that happens, when someone, some, you know, a group of people you've been working with so intensely, they turn on you or they split away from you or you, you, you turn away from them? How, how did that feel? Well, I think it's certainly uh, the case that, if you know, to have a public opinion, to express your point of view, uh, in in the public domain is perilous. Now, the specific thing that I I expressed was a condemnation of far left extremism of the BLM riots, and and this was done by recommending uh, a book that documented that behaviour in 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 twenty twenty in America. Uh, now there were repercussions for that. Ra- ra- la- uh, radio stations said that they would stop playing the music of the band. Uh, one festival in the UK dropped me as a DJ without letting me know. And so you, if you have the wrong opinions, certainly there, there, are, there is uh, punishment for that. In, in the music industry is a very small industry. It's one with a, a, a strong group thing, a homo- homogenous thought and outliers are often punished. And so uh, I would say in, in my case, it wasn't fair on the band for them to uh, suffer the consequences of what I think are quite reasonable opinions, but in the music industry, apparently not. And so I thought it was best for me to step away from the band to save them uh, that um, difficulty. Um, now, if if Pink Floyd were still together, uh, uh, if any of them, <laughs> who would have stepped away, who would have st- stayed by each other? Well, it's hard to hard to play out. It seems like that they're their beef is is uh, is pretty deep, and um, if, if it's a sort of it's, it's come to the fact that they're sort of slinging insults at each other on Twitter, it sort of implies it's not necessarily just about their politics. That there's actually a deep personal rift there that goes back many decades. Waters has said that actually, you know, he's the driving force behind the band. He's he's the creative genius, um, and they were they 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 sank into you know into 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 crap after after he left them um is is that is that right do you think certainly their most successful albums came while he was still in in the band whether whoever wrote the most amount of songs and he claims it although the song credits sort of seem to suggest a more collaborative or even different story um, there's a tension when you're all in the band together and you feed off each other and just the simple face of of your bandmate might lead you in a in a different different way or the smallest suggestions the mood of the room affect the songwriting massively so there's no doubt that pink floyd at their best was when the four of them were well actually pink floyd to be honest there was also the the sid barrett period as well so bands change through time and and the connection between the the individuals in the group massively affects the outcome of of the of the albums and the records and songs and the te- the tension between them, do you think that may- maybe sort of spurred on that period of creativity that you think was the best? It's certainly my favourite uh, Pink Floyd albums uh, were when those guys were together. Now, I- I'm not enough of a Pink Floydian expert to, uh, to, to really know uh, their interactions in, 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 the, in, the, in the band, but it, I think... Dark Side of the Moon, if record sales is a testament for anything, and it's a 50-year-old album this year, I think it sold 50 million records, which is still one of the highest-selling records of all time. And if that's anything to go by, that does suggest that there, that there was something, there was a magic when those guys were together. I mean, it, artists, this, he wouldn't be the first artist to have had an extreme, crazy thought. I mean, it's part and part of being an artist to live on the edges of what's acceptable in, in social terms, political terms, in creative terms. That's, that's, how you, that's why you get people of, of vision and genius within art, because they explore these quite sort of um, uh, dark nether, nether worlds that no one else, us normies, wouldn't dare explore. Um, so isn't it part, part and parcel of, of being an artist? I mean, wacky ideas, stupidities have always come from artists' brains and, and mouths. 
I think you've got a, a point there. And we saw this with Kanye West as well, where he's been right on the edge. I mean, I do consider Kanye a musical genius. And I think many people will consider Roger Waters a musical genius. He's able to go out there into the chaos and, and make sense of of it. And, and, and his mind is, and they, they, their minds are able to, to and, and we need their minds to, to be let loose and, and explore that that territory. So I think you're absolutely correct. It is part and parcel of, of the creative um, mind and and we should expect that. But but when they cross the line, I think it's absolutely acceptable to criticise them for doing so. Do you think at the moment, though, um, really the, the wind is blowing against those who are who have views that are supportive of Russia? I mean, the, 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 the people who are being cancelled, who are really being cancelled at the moment, are artists who are Russian. I mean, just being Russian will get you cancelled in, in film competitions, in music competitions, in, uh, on the opera stage. I, I'm now not allowed, not able to hear one of the greatest living conductors, Valery Gergiev, or several singers, opera singers, because just because they're Russian. Mm-hmm. This is the, the, the real threat to to our free freedom of speech at the moment is, is Russians getting cancelled for being of an ethnicity that people don't like at the moment. I think you're absolutely right. And we've even seen the case that there are Russian artists who are explicitly anti-Putin who are still having their work removed. I think you'll remember, uh, and this is perhaps the, the, the nadir of the lunacy, last year when in, at Milan University, Dostoevsky was removed from the syllabus because it was deemed Russian. Uh, you're absolutely right. It's gone way too far. I would even, yeah, I, I, I think that that there's a there's a there's a sense of of overreach and um and I'm I'm again I think that there is a reasonable conversation to have and that Roger Waters could have, um, but he goes uh, way too far, I believe. Artists in general need to have this space, need to have this legroom to think, kind of crazy things. Um, at the moment. Um, especially within pop music, uh, there is a liberal conformity um, threatening that ability. Do, do, do you see that? I mean, on, on, on all sides. I mean, the way that, you know, what you thought was treated and the way that Roger Waters, what Waters thinks is treated. Do we not need more space? And how do we find that space in a, in a, in a world which is so constrained, not just by sort of people who, who want to stop the way people think, but also by money, which, which, really, which really doesn't want people to stray outside of tiny, narrow confines of what the advertisers will allow. If, if, the, if what the conversation is opened up by, by someone like Waters or someone like Kanye West, then perhaps there's a, there's a good thing. But So I wouldn't necessarily say... Oh, well, in fact, I would absolutely defend their, their right to free speech. But we must meet this folly or these bad ideas with good ideas and they must be criticised because they are so woeful. If you look through all of Roger Waters' interviews and his public statements, he is so anti-Western. He cannot, he, he, it's almost like, he, even, in, even in his speech to the UN Security Council, he seems to, it seems to be more a, a dig at how the West is run rather than how the um, uh, Russia, when it was the whole speech was about the Russia-Ukraine war. I think it's, uh, of course, we should accept these people uh, uh, to have. A, we must defend their, their their free speech. Whether we invite them to speak at the UN Security Council is a whole other thing, completely. Is it is it a um, a, a business move to to be cancelled? I mean, getting cancelled is quite a quite useful for you for ticket sales, uh, depending on which field you're you're in. I mean, hasn't been can... that useful for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're right, though. Actually, when I uh, quit the band, there was a bump in streaming on on the band. All publicity is good publicity, they say. Although on a personal level, it's not been good at all for me, uh, either financially or in, in the pursuit of my passion for music. Um, it sort of depends on on the circumstance, I guess. It'd be interesting to know how exactly this is profitable for Roger Waters. Is, is him rallying against Russia, is this going to make his deal, with, uh, th- this bundle deal to sell his back catalogue, fall through? There is some suggestion 
that it might. It's probably more complicated than that. Is it? Uh, is he doing that to sm- to spite his ex bandmates because he's considerably wealthier than they are um, as well? So there's so there's so much at play to to know whether it's really profitable. It may be profitable to some, perhaps to the record labels. I mean, if you look at what's happening with Sam Smith, he's he's been across the news over the last couple of weeks because of his various outfits and performances, including a performance at the Grammy Awards where he's dressed like a, a, a like a demon and in a highly sexualized um, stage outfit and and highly provocative and the attention he's getting and then as well turning up to the Brits in what looks like a a sort of wetsuit he's farted into, it, it, he's getting a lot of attention and that will actually and be good for business because as Oscar Wilde said, the only thing worse than uh, not being, uh, sorry, than being talked about is not being talked about. So yeah, for some artists, it's a good thing. And just a final question. I mean, what does it feel like going on tour once you've been kind of cancelled or had, you know, so much opprobrium sort of foisted upon you? I mean, how, you've been in that situation. What, I mean, does it, you know, how does it feel? Well, for me, I went from uh, being a part of arena band headlining um, f- headlining festivals, and now uh, w- my latest tour has been to considerably small, smaller uh, venues, playing solo shows. And to be honest, I'm I'm really enjoying it. It's complete. It's like it wasn't for me when I started fifteen years ago in the old days. But uh, it's it's certainly um, uh, it's uh, a, st- a stripped back set, you could say. <laughs> Thank you for for joining us.